So in this video, I'm going to be attempting to disable the Intel management engine on this Dell OptiPlex 7020. This, this isn't really a tutorial since I've never done this before. I'm just documenting the process. So first of all, it looks like I'm going to need to put the computer into service mode. do that there is a jumper right under this blue slot and we could just take the password jumper off and put it onto the service mode pins to the left of it Now that we've put it into the service mode, it's going to give us this message when we boot up. That's normal. Now we just have to hit F1 to boot. So this is the tutorial I'm going to be following. It's on GitHub by the user Mostov02. It's called Remove Intel ME FPT. I'll put a link to it in the description. So I've already read through this and it looks like I need to download Intel ME System Tools. And I believe this computer uses the C220 chipset, so I need version 9.1 R7 which is here go over here and download save and I also need to download ME cleaner Now it's possible to do this in Windows, but I don't use Windows, so instead I'm going to be using a USB stick with FreeDOS on it. So I need to copy these over to there. Alright, now we go back to the guide. And determining whether the FD is locked. So Like I need to run this command and then to make sure I can run these commands to try reading the chip and flashing it back. So I'm gonna reboot into FreeDOS and we'll do that. I'll need to enable legacy boot support in order to get into FreeDOS. There we go. I think that's enough. F12. One and give 
USB storage device. say yes so it looks like the FD is unlocked all right and it says you can verify it by trying to read it and then write it back so I guess we'll try that Check whether or not Intel Boot Guard is enabled. Uh, let's see. Oh, wait. I guess it doesn't work in DOS. Alright, the DOS uses backslashes. I'm used to Linux. Alright, we need to go into me info. with the verbose flag. Three. 
Okay. I don't think that's supposed to happen. I don't know if it showed those flags or not. Since we can't scroll back up. Let's try running it again. I'll put the into a text file. I think that's how you do it in DOS. It's not in there. Maybe it just doesn't work in DOS. I don't know. Let's see. Well, it looks like there's a Linux version of me info. So I guess I'll try that. Alright, back in Linux, we're gonna look at this. See. Okay, looks like we can use this thing to check. I suppose it would help if I typed it correctly. Okay, so we go to that. Alright. Touch slash Intel me tool dash B. Which they specify if you need sudo or not. 
Okay, check the output. Okay, what do we got? Oh, uh, yeah, I remember reading that. Need to set IOMEM relaxed. Where did I see that? All right, here it is. So we just had to put that in the grub config. That's it. And I guess now we reboot and try it again. All right. Let's try it again. Actually. Let's see. Oh crud, I, I know what I did. Forgot to update grub after I did that. What was it? Actually, I think it's update dash grub. All right, let's try again. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, let's see what it says. Measured boot off, verified boot off. Cool. So we should be good to go, looks like. Yeah, both disabled, I think that's what we want. So we should be good to go. So then, this part, I already did the jumper. Let's 
see. So we're going to want to do a full dump. I put enabled. Flash neutralize every region. Well, in my case, I want to do both. Enable the bits, but also strip out those modules. So it looks like we need to use the dash capital S flag. Um, yeah. I'll reboot back into FreeDOS. We can do that. All right. So it looks like I will need to do a dump of the current flash chip. Then we'll have to go back into Linux to run that Python script to make the needed changes. Then we'll come back into FreeDOS to actually flash it. All right. Back in the Linux. All right. Go into our downloads folder, and then me cleaner. All right. We want to run Python me cleaner. Just copy that into the same folder. Pretty sure that's right. back into DOS and try flashing it. Wait, 
first. Um, wait, does it just overwrite that same file? Hmm. Copy it back onto the USB stick. All right, let's copy it back over. I'm gonna name this. Actually. Should be good to go. Okay. Like it worked. I think. Should be able to reboot. Actually, let's do a full power down. All right. Now the moment of 
truth. Let's see if I bricked my machine or not. Hey, it's alive. All right, now I want to verify that it's actually disabled. It looks like the tool we used earlier can be used for that. Table. Okay, okay. Firmware and it complete. No. Firmware and it complete. No. Current working state. Anything but platform disable weight. Current working state. Okay, well, it doesn't say platform disable weight, so. That's good. Error code. No error. Progress phase. Up phase, yeah. Progress phase state. Strip save me to save on. Wait, what? Progress phase state. 0x4d. Uh. Strap say. Don't know what that means. But it looks otherwise like it worked. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. And then so we can redump the firmware. Oops. Dump the firmware again after a successful boot. And run that on it. I guess we may as well. So, back to DOS. Back in Linux, let's go and copy that thing we just dumped. New dump, copy. Let's put it here. Uh, 
Okay, let's see. Me. On. Me. Cleaner. Dot pi. Dash C. New. Dump. Dot bin. And actually. Let me see. Yeah, it's all caps. Okay. I'll push be similar to this. One partition and a bit of set. One partition and it is set. Cool. So I think it worked. Now the last thing, I think I should go ahead and put grub back to the way it was before I forget. I don't know if there's any harm in leaving this here, but Better safe than sorry. All right. I think all I need to do now is open the computer back up and Set that jumper back how it was. All right, now all I need to do is reset that jumper. There we go. That should be it. All right, now just one final boot to make sure everything working should be what wait but I replaced it that's peculiar again. Hmm. Well, that's weird. I guess we'll to open it back up. So I took it back apart and turns out that jumper wasn't quite on all the way. So I just put it back in place and I no longer get that message when it boots up. And I tested it for a little while. Everything seems to be working fine. So I guess that'll be it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. <laughs>